This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm your host, George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, and I am flying solo today. I am totally free. All by myself, I would sing it, but the FCC would take us off the air. It's a free call today, and I would love to hear your questions. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Again, that's 888-825-5225. And yes, I am one of the storied millennials out there. And here's the thing about millennials that they don't tell you. They're scared of phone calls. But to make this show interesting, we've got to hear your voice. So give us a call if you're a millennial, especially Gen Zers, uh, Gen Xers, Boomers. I'll take them all. Uh, but I am one of those millennials, and I was very average when I started here at Ramsey eight years ago, I had $40,000 in debt, and I had the exact average amount of student loan debt. 36000 of that was student loans, and 4000 of that was credit cards. And I grew up in a very normal household, middle class. I grew up with immigrant parents who immigrated from the Middle East, and they conformed to the American culture real fast. And uh, the American dream, here's what it is. I want to buy a house. I want to have a good job. I want to have the car. And with all of that comes payments. And so I learned that you just live on payments and you just got to be smart about moving the debt around and managing your debt. And that is the way to financial success. Wrong. When I started here at 24 years old as an intern, I started following the Ramsey plan. I went, oh my gosh, there's a different way. I don't have to live with these student loans for the next 20 years, which is the average it takes for people to pay them off. I don't have to be average anymore. And so I got on the plan. I started following these baby steps that we teach day in and day out. And I started realizing my plan sucks, so why not try someone else's? And I did it. In 18 months, I paid off my debt. I was debt-free, and I built that emergency fund, and I started investing for the future in our company 401k here. And I don't have kids yet, but I met my wife here. She works here at Ramsey Solutions. It's a beautiful story for another time. And now we have this big, hairy, audacious goal of paying off our house in our early 30s. And I'm happy and proud to say that within a few short months, we're going to have that bad boy paid off. And I'm not rich. I'm not special. I never thought any of this was possible for me. But after following this plan and realizing that it, it doesn't take uh, a genius, it just takes sacrifice. It takes hard work. It takes saying no to a lot of things you want to do in order to get things that you don't have. And I don't want to payment the rest of my life. We've got goals. We've got things we want to do, vacations we want to take, organizations we want to give to. And I realized that money problems and payments were just holding me back. And it's holding back an entire generation of people who aren't starting families. They're not buying the house that they want. They're not able to do the things they want to do. They're in jobs they don't even like because they're trying to make their payments. So I want to talk to you guys today. 888 825 is the phone number. Call us up if you want to learn how to pay off debt, if you want to know what to do with the emergency fund, what's the best way to pay off the debt, how do you get started in investing, how do you pay off your house early. I would love to talk all things money with you today, and we are kicking it off with David in Phoenix, Arizona. David, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, good afternoon here. I don't know where you are. Phoenix. What time is it in Phoenix? Um, it's... It's 11.10. Okay, you're right. We're both right. How can I help today? So my, my question is what to do with my excess cash that I have in my possession. Okay. Uh, so far, we have seven houses and they're all paid for. Whoa. And, yeah. So, and we also have um, five of them are rentals, and we're gathering up about 5500 a month. Incredible. What's your and net worth? Um, probably just under 300 or 3 million. Unbelievable. Way to go, man. You're a baby steps millionaire. This is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, also I have two houses that are ours, one here in Phoenix and one up in Idaho. And they're about a million and they're paid for also. Oh my gosh. So, 
So we took some money and got twenty eight um twenty eight thousand in gold and then we got thirteen thousand in silver and we're looking at purchasing some more but I don't know what to do with it. We got about three hundred thousand that we could play with there. So you have three hundred thousand in liquid so, dollars to play with. Or are you saying if you sold this yes. uh, gold and silver? No. No, we got three hundred thousand just sitting here. In cash. Yes. Well, do you love well, real estate? In the bank. Yeah, yeah, it, we've been doing well in it. It sounds like that's something that you guys are really into. I mean, you're at you're obviously at baby step seven, so this is where you build wealth and give, and you've got tons of options. And so I can't make that decision for you, but what I can do is is dig in and ask you what are those maybe short term, long term goals? Are you married? Do you have anyone else in the family that is making this decision with you? Uh, yes, I am married. We got five children, and they're all giving us grandbabies. Oh, that's sweet. So yeah. what's the goal? Do you yeah, want do you want more real estate, or do you want to do something fun? Do you want to take maybe the kids and the grandbabies on an amazing vacation and put part of this into real estate? What are you thinking? Well, um, we're totally debt free. Cars, um, all that stuff is debt free. So we gather up five thousand five hundred a month, and we can easily live on that. Plus, put savings away. So. Your question, or my question, is: I got three hundred thousand dollars, and we're, or thirty thousand dollars, and we're looking at, um, maybe investing that not necessarily in more real estate, because I'm I'm sixty eight, and uh, we do our own rental, and clean up, and you know, screen our tenants, and so far we got good tenants, and they're paying without any problem, and. Uh, I don't know. We got this three hundred thousand, and uh, should we buy more gold or silver? Or I, if if I'm you, I'm not doing that. We don't recommend getting into gold and silver. I'd rather see that in good growth stock mutual funds. You can do that in a brokerage account if you want to keep it fairly liquid, uh, and it's going to be in there for you know four, five, six years. Uh, but if I'm you, I'm sitting down with my wife and I'm going, hey, what what could we do that's absolutely incredible? Because this is the part where you get to live like no one else because you guys have lived like no one else. So have that conversation, start dreaming. And maybe he goes to four places. Maybe you go, hey, we're gonna take a crazy vacation with all the kids and grandkids. We're gonna do some real estate investing. We're gonna do some mutual fund investing. And we're gonna get a few toys and we're gonna to give generously and split it up. Yeah, It doesn't all have to go to one thing. Uh, but I think this is a conversation that you and your wife have. You've done so well. There's no wrong answer here other than going into debt. Um, but I think based on Not your happy. goals and the things that you want to do and how you want to leave a legacy, this is where you get to do that, man. You're an inspiration. David, you have done so well. $3 million net worth, $300,000 sitting in cash. You're who I want to be when I grow up, David. Thanks for calling in. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. You 
are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. It's a free call this hour, 888-825-5225. Call me up with your money questions. I would love to have a conversation. Danielle joins us in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Danielle, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey. Hey. All right. So, um... My husband and I work for the same company, and in January, they're finally going to be offering a 401k program. Um, We're at the point in our baby steps that we can go ahead and start investing in that. What I was wondering, though, would it make more sense for us to put them, basically have one account versus each invested in an account just because of the way the interest works, or would it make more sense for each of us to have our own account? They're doing a 5% match on it. What was your thinking in doing it all in one account? Um, I wasn't sure if the interest would compound better because of having more in one account versus having it split up into two accounts. Ah, no, the the interest won't make a difference. If you've got 10 in one and 10 in another or 20 all in one, it's still going to okay. compound at the same rate when you put it all together in the end. So on that, on that side, there's not going to be any benefit there. So if that was the only reason you were okay. thinking about doing it in one, I would go ahead and do both. You're going to get the match on okay. both sides and you'll have two accounts. How old are you two? Um, I'm 24 and my husband's 29. 20, that's so awesome. And you guys are already jumping into this thing. What are the options as far as the 401k goes? Uh, I know there's a 5% match. Is this traditional or is there a Roth option as well? I think it's just traditional. Um, he's still kind of ironing out the details. Really, we were the ones that brought it to him and said, look, we kind of need to either move on or start seeing if there's some options here because there's kind of too many places that are offering it right now to stick with something that's not. And so they started working on it a couple months ago and said that by January, they're hoping to have it all set up um, to get us going in it. That's great. So this um, thing I'm will kick off in sure. January? Yes, it should kick off in January. And you've got your fully funded emergency fund in place? Yes. Yep. And all that paid off. Way to go. Yeah, what I, if I'm in your shoes, here's what we recommend. Uh, match is going to beat Roth, which is going to beat traditional. So I would go up to that 5% match for both of you. Out of your paychecks. And once you hit that, I would go, uh, if you don't already have a Roth IRA, go ahead and open one of those. You can get in touch with one of our SmartVestor pros at RamseySolutions.com. They can walk you through that process, educate you on your options, and that's going to grow tax-free with after-tax okay. dollars. And so you can uh, put up to 6000 for uh, people your age. You can put up to 6000 this year. And once you've done the match at 5%, you've got the 6000 fully funded Roth IRAs for both of you, then you can go back to that company 401k and finish out your 15%. Okay, that was what I was going to ask was if we should put those that, okay. Yep. Yeah. If they end up having a Roth mm-hmm. option, you could put that all in the Roth option. The key here is we want that tax-free growth to be working on our behalf. And you guys are so okay. young. You're, you're going to be multimillionaires. I'm just so pumped hearing young people getting into investing and doing it the right way, debt-free with an emergency okay. fund. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the call. Good stuff there. Marshall is in Boise, Idaho. Marshall, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How can I help today? Good. I'm not quite as young as your last caller. I'm 44. Okay. Hey, that's still young, man. Give yourself some credit. Uh, Okay, thanks. (laughs) I'll I'll try to remember that. Uh, Just moved here from Virginia, and I kept my house in Virginia that I'm renting out, and then I'm renting an apartment in Boise, in the Boise area, and I'm trying to decide whether it's smart to hold on to my house in Virginia or not. I'm single, uh, one small dog. You got a single, you're single and a dog, and you're renting right now. Yeah. Are you wanting to own a home yeah. in the Boise area? Are you there long term? Don't know yet. But you're working in Boise currently. I am. And in, it's not remote. Area. You're, going in, you're going into the office and all that? You've got some roots there? I, um, I'm going in to teach children math, and uh, I don't know how long I'll be here, but at least for the next year. Okay. Well, you know, I don't, I don't love the idea of being a long distance landlord. Uh, I'm sure you have, you've got to have something set up to where, you know, if the HVAC goes out, you've got someone to call, right? Yes, I have a company who takes about eighty bucks a month to kind of manage things. Okay. 
Yeah, long term, I want to see you with your with a primary residence paid off and then getting into real estate investing. So if I'm in your shoes, personally, what I would do is sell that house, take that money. And if you think you're going to plant roots in Boise, at least for a few years, you can go ahead and find something in the Boise area and work aggressively to pay that off. Do you have any other do you have any debt currently? I've got about eight grand in student loan debt, and I've got about 25 in the bank for my emergency fund. Oh, okay. You have 25 in cash in the bank. I thought you meant you had debt. I was like, you have debt in the bank? How does that work? Okay. <laughs> no, no, so no. we've got the eight oh, grand no. in student loans, and then do you owe anything on that property? I owe 110, and I could sell it tomorrow for probably 220. Oh, well, that's a nice chunk of change. So you'll you'll have about a hundred grand if you sell it. Yep. In cash? Yep. Well, I yep. want to see these student, student loans paid off. I mean, it's, it's not a ton here. You could get rid of it without having to sell the home. So it's not a – there's no urgency there. But if I'm you, I'm right. selling that house, uh, taking a, a portion of that money, getting rid of these student loans. You've already got that emergency fund. I would even take down that emergency fund and get rid of these student loans today regardless of the home sale. Okay. What's making that you have – That makes me nervous, but – What's <laughs> What makes you nervous about I just, it? I just like having that – that money in the bank in case of an emergency. Do you do you like paying your student loan payment? Uh, I do not. <laughs> well, I guess you got to decide. What I haven't you like had, more. Well, I haven't had to pay it in a, in a while, but yeah, I mean, it's the next thing to go. I just wanted to maybe get up to maybe around thirty grand in the bank before I. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll still be in a great financial spot, even paying off this loan. You'll still have what seventeen uh, grand or so. 16 yep. grand. So you're still going to be in a great spot uh, for an emergency fund sake. I'm sure that's still a f at least a few months worth of expenses. But without that payment, yeah, you're yeah. going to have a little bit of income back in your life to put towards your next goal, which I assume would be, uh, are you investing currently? Um, I contribute to a 401k at work and, and have been uh, contributing to a 403b at my last job for about 18 years. Okay, nice. So, I mean, you're doing you're doing some good things. There's a slight it's slightly out of order from what we teach, uh, where I want you to pay off yeah. that debt first. You have the cash on hand. You can do that today, and then you can continue okay. investing uh, once you build that emergency fund back up to where you want it. Three to six month range. I assume since you're uh, but, you're single, you want it closer to six months. Yes. Okay. Yep. What were you saying? So you think you think get rid of that that house. I would personally, because you don't have a primary residence that's paid off. If you had a primary residence that's paid off and this thing was still lingering uh, and it didn't bother you that much, but it's still a long distance situation and you don't have a house that you're living in. And so I want to see right. you debt free completely house and everything before you get into uh, real estate investing. So there's no there's nothing on fire here. But if I'm in your shoes, you're going to put yourself in a really sweet financial position when you have six figures in cash. And now you have some options when you want to, you know, go go right. put 20 percent down on a place in Boise or wherever you end up planting your roots. OK, well, that helps, and I appreciate your time. Absolutely, Marshall. Thanks so much for the call. Love this real estate talk. You know, there's a lot of hype going on in the real estate market today, particularly buyers out there think they've got to buy and it's got to happen right now. And a lot of that is because mortgage interest rates keep reaching all-time lows, making buyers frantic to lock in. And don't get me wrong, getting a low rate is a great thing, but it's not a green light to do stupid. Stupid as in buying before you're debt-free or with a zero down payment or offering way over asking price and waiving inspection. Stuff like that is high risk and always costs you more than you'd save in the long run. So get your head out of the craziness for a second and look at your situation. Are you debt free? Do you have a down payment of 10 to 20% saved? Can you afford home ownership? Do you want the responsibility? If and only if your answer is a big fat yes to all of those questions, then buying a home is a smart move for you. Now, it's easy to get caught up in all this home buying hype, which is why you need facts. And we've got a great free mortgage calculator to figure out exactly what you can actually afford with the mortgage options out there. Just go to RamseySolutions.com and click on free tools to check out that free mortgage calculator. Do things the smart way. This is The Ramsey Show.
stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. Both great podcasts you can find on the Ramsey Network. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. It's a free call this hour, 888 5225 I would be happy and honored to answer your money questions. Joey joins us in Fort Myers, Florida. Joey, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a question. So I am all cut off on my stuff. I do have a, a car payment for the next two months. Zero percent interest, no issues. It's like a thousand dollars, but I do have one hundred twenty thousand in the bank right now. I have a potential additional one hundred twenty to one hundred thirty thousand dollars in the bank if I need it. Um, and I'm currently in an apartment for the next four months, um, and I'm trying to figure out what should I do. I, I want to invest in uh, real estate potentially. It, it sounds great on Facebook, uh, a lot of benefits, but I still need to become more educated around it. Um, but, you know, I was thinking of instead of buying a single family home, buying a duplex or, or a quadplex, um, um, but, but really I'm kind of just in, in the ether at this point with all the options, but no options at the same time because I'm not that educated on it. So I'd love some advice. How old are you? I am 33. 33, about my age. All right. And what's your income? Uh, it's 105000 a year. Fantastic. And... Tell me this. Where is all this money coming from that you've got in the bank? Have you just been saving for a few years now? Yeah. 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 I uh, I have a pretty good job, um, obviously, and uh, just been saving um, and, and being uh, a little frugal. So, yeah. Very impressive. And you said you have potentially another 120 in the bank. What does that mean? Um, so I so I had a I, – I flipped the house. Um, and had an addition, made a hundred thousand off of it, um, and I gave it to my mom because she helped me buy the house. Um, but she is uh, she's demanding that I take it back, but I, I want it to be hers because it's kind of my payback for her. So um, if I need it, I have it. So you gifted this thing to her, and she's like, "No, take this back. I don't want it." Basically, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's nice of you. So you're not brand new to this real real estate game. Since you flipped right. a house. Well, here's the thing. You mentioned at the beginning that you have this car loan, and you mentioned that it's 0%, so you're not worried about it. What is this car loan? How much? Uh, it's only 800 bucks left, 800 to 900 on, and I could pay it off tomorrow. You owe 900 total secure. on this car debt. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have $120,000 in the bank. Correct. Is this sentimental? What's going Why don't you just pay the car off today? <laughs> I just... I just well, if it's zero percent, it's zero percent. So I, just I don't care if it's a hundred percent. This is stupid to carry around a debt when you have a hundred and twenty thousand. It's a math equation. Yeah, yeah, I, I I see that. Do you have any other payments in your life? Is this your only debt you have? That's it. Yep, other than my rent payment. Yep. Wow. I mean, you've done really well, man. I don't know what's making you hang on to, to payments, but I think you need to say no to payments for the rest of your life and become extra wealthy. I mean, you're doing so great otherwise. Yeah. So, so should I? What, what should I get into to potentially, you know, to grow that that money? Um, should it be in, in rental properties? Um, like, that, what are your thoughts? Clearly, about that? that's something you're passionate about. And so, what I want you to do is, once you pay off the car today, which you're going to do as soon as we're off the phone, get rid of that okay. debt, and then I want you to park some of that money for a fully funded emergency fund. You already have it in cash. So, figure out what one right. month's expenses looks like for you. And uh, are you single? I am. Okay. I would probably lean towards that six months since you already have it in cash. So take one month of actual expenses, not income, multiply that out by six, and leave that in maybe a high-yield savings account and, and park it there for emergencies. 
Okay. Then whatever money's left after that, are you currently investing into retirement? Uh, I am, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you continue doing that because this is all going to be solved in a matter of hours. So I'm not going to tell you to pause investing because you're about to pay this car off. You already have the money for your emergency fund. So are you investing 15% into uh, something like a 401k at work? Uh, I am not, actually. What are you investing in? Um, I, not Well, I'm doing 401k, but not 15%. Um, oh, okay. I, I, Seeing the returns um, and then kind of some of, my, some of my side hustles, I was deciding to spend that money on some of the side hustles, which, uh, um, I, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, here's here's what I, what I recommend, what we teach, is to do 15%, and you can do it if you've got a match at work, do it up to the match, and then you can open up a Roth IRA and fill that up. The max is 6000 for you, and then go back to the right. 401k and keep filling that out if you don't have a Roth option. Once you do 15%, then you're on to baby steps five and six, which is saving for kids' college. Do you have kids? I do not. No kids. So you're moving on to paying off your house early, um, which you've got a property already that's paid for. No, I'm in a, I'm literally renting in an apartment. But the one your mom is in. Oh, yeah, that, I paid, we paid that off. Okay. So I think your next goal is to find a primary residence for you to live in and pay that off. I wouldn't go getting into real estate investing quite yet. Okay. So uh, you're in the Fort Myers area. I would start looking at what houses cost over there if that's where you're planting roots and say, all right, if I wanted 20% or more down, I mean, a guy like you, it wouldn't shock me if you were able to pay cash for a house with with your income right. and your diligence with saving. But I'm not going to be mad at you. If you can put 20% down and avoid PMI, that private mortgage insurance, that's going to avoid you right. throwing money away to protect the banks. And so once you do that right. and you pay off your house early, then we can start talking about real estate investing um, as you live and give like no one else in Baby Step 7. So that's where that would fall. I'm all for real estate investing. I think it's fantastic. I think you're going to do really well with it. But there's a time and a place for it. And uh, you're, you're real close, but you've got a few things to do before that. Okay. Absolutely. Right, perfect. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Way to go. Love hearing stories like that, Joey. Pay that car off, buddy. All right, Amber joins us in Little Rock, Arkansas. Amber, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, George. I'm so excited to talk to you. Well, it's nice that someone's excited to talk to me for, for once. It's great to talk to you, Amber. How can I help? Um, we are in baby step two. Okay. And I just have a question about um, our emergency fund and how we're doing on it. Um, I have four children and four small dogs. Wow. Busy. It, yes, very busy. A lot of creatures, a um, lot of and, drool. And our dogs are, you know, like our children to us. You know, they sleep in bed with us. They're our babies as well. Um, I'm not comfortable having only a $1,000 emergency fund in case they need to go to the vet if there's an emergency. So you're more concerned about the dogs than the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if a kid it's breaks really a leg? <laughs> Amber, this is a hilarious scenario here. You're more <laughs> concerned about the dog vet bill than you are the kids' medical bills. Um, well, luckily, they, we have very good insurance. Um, okay. So I, I hardly pay anything. They have t uh, two different coverages. Okay, okay. This so makes a lot more sense. For them... That's completely free if any children need to go to the doctor. I don't pay anything. But yeah. I do pay, um, like one of my dogs hurt their leg, and I had to pay $4,000 to it. get it fixed. Oh, my gosh. So okay, it so just makes me nervous only having $1,000. I understand. So how much debt do you have? Um, total of 30000 Okay. And what's the household income? Um. My husband makes 6000 and then I get... A month? Uh, two, yes. Okay, and then that's comforting. I get 2000 child support and also 800 of a retirement, so like 8800 total. Okay, and that's take home. Yes. So we can get rid of this debt within a matter of months and get you a lot more security with a fully funded emergency fund. Yeah, we have about um, 3000 a month we can put towards the debt. 
okay, so that's 10 months. I think you, you can do it faster than that. I think you can live on less than that. And here's the deal. Uh, I get that $1,000 is scary, but I want you to be scared because debt is scary. It's stealing from your paycheck. It's stealing from your life. And so you've got to make a decision to go, I want to take this uncomfortability and let it fuel me in my baby step two journey as I pay off my debt using the debt snowball from smallest to largest, regardless of interest rate. And in no time, you're going to build that fully funded emergency fund. But right now, you've got to let this fuel you on your journey to debt freedom. This is The Ramsey Show. personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast on the Ramsey Network. And it's a free call this hour, 888-825-5225. If you need some advice, you want some affirmation, you want a second opinion, I am here for you today. Today is the day you can actually get on the show. Don't be scared. Don't be shy, especially you millennials, you Gen Zers who think your phones are just for TikToks. No, they make phone calls too. There's a special app for it. And if you just type in the numbers, 888 825 you'll get connected with Kelly and she will be mostly happy to talk with you. And hopefully we can get you on the air and get you some help. That is what I'm here for. We just took a call from Amber and it was hilarious. She's got four kids and four dogs, and she was more concerned about the dogs, understandably so, because the kids have health insurance, but she was worried about the $1,000 emergency fund. And uh, it reminded me of this hilarious article I found from Yahoo Life. Survey says nearly half of millennials and Gen Zers spend money on their pets' social media. This is wild. New survey from LendingTree, more than one quarter of the 1425 pet owners polled. So 1,400 pet owners were polled. 28% said they've spent money on their pets for social media posts. Oh, my gosh. About 47% of Gen Zers admitted to the practice, along with 40% of millennials. And here's the wild part. When you dig into the numbers, the Gen Zers say they spent the most. An average of $1,800 per month on their dogs, a mix of essentials, subscription boxes, pet insurance, and the expenses required for social media fame. Y'all, if there was a wall, I would try to punch through it right now. I don't know that I'd even make it through the drywall, but this is insane. What are we doing now? Unless your dog makes you money, like I'm a big fan of Doug the Pug and Doug the Pug is a multimillionaire and I am not. So Doug the Pug's doing something right. But if you're aspiring to get a pet sponsorship uh, and all these things, but you're spending almost two grand a month to make this happen, this is insane. And then you're telling me uh, that the housing market's too expensive. Yeah, it is when you're spending two grand a month on your dog. Goodness gracious, how cute is your Pomeranian? I have an adorable French bulldog. And yes, she does have an Instagram, but we rarely post. We just did it to stop bothering people on our own personal social media feeds. And no, we don't spend anywhere near two grand a month on our French Bulldog, as expensive as they are. Kelly is looking at me with a lot of judgment right now, and I am, I am here for it. I am loving it. So there you go. That's, that's some news from Yahoo Life. Thank you for that amazing survey from Lending Tree. Let's go to the phones. We've got Heather in Dallas, Texas. Heather, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Oh, I'm so glad to talk to you. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How can I help today? Um, so my question is, I discovered y'all um, about a year and a half ago. Well, not quite. Right after I had bought a new home. So I bought a home about 14 months ago and then discovered y'all. And I'm thinking I may be a little house poor. And I'm wondering if I should sell. And if so, with what sense of urgency in the current market? Okay. All right. Walk <laughs> me through the situation. So uh, what's your household income? It's right at 95 gross. All right. And is that just you? Is there other people involved here? Just me. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, what was this house purchase? How much? So, so I bought it for 340000 I okay. put 80000 down, so I financed um, two sixty. 
Okay. Um, unfortunately, for 30 years mm. <laughs> at 3%, and I owe about 256 now. I <clears throat> talked to my realtor recently, and he said he could probably sell it for 435 Whoa. I know. <laughs> Thank you, pandemic. I guess it's the one semi-decent thing. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. So I, I love the home. It's everything I would want, but um, I'm just wondering if I, sh- if I should sell. Well, uh, I don't want you to think you're in a fire now. What percentage of your take-home pay is the mortgage payment? I'm thinking, if I did my math correctly, it's about 31%. Okay. I mean, we recommend 25% of your take-home pay on a 15-year fix. So obviously, you went with a 30-year that lowers your payment, and so it is a little bit high. Do you think your income is going to increase in the near future? Um, not by much, probably like 3% per year is my guess, two to 3% average. Okay. Um, and do you I have any, debt free. do you have, so you don't have any debt other than the house. Right. And you have a fully funded emergency fund. I have a fully funded three months since I'm single. I am shooting to the six months, but I have three months so far. Okay. Other than that, I'm like on step six, I believe. Yeah. Well, Heather, you're, you're based on the numbers here, you're not in, in terrible financial shape. I mean, is the payment stressing you out? Is it putting a big crunch on the budget? No, I'm just um, I'm just totally getting on board with y'all, and I just want to do the right thing. So you, you went, and, oh, my gosh, this Ramsey plan. I didn't do it the right way. Oh, my gosh, yeah. no. And I do like to have a little bit just cash flow. You know, I wouldn't mind having more just to be more generous or whatever the case yeah. may be, but... I just didn't know what sense of urgency I should feel right now. No, I mean, nothing's on fire. If you called and said, hey, it's 50% or more of of my take-home pay, and I'm just riddled with anxiety, and I don't sleep at night, and I can't do anything with my life because of this mortgage payment, I would say, yes, sell it. But you told me this is basically your your dream house. You love it. Um, You're in this location for a while. I wouldn't I wouldn't go selling it today. Now, if there was any other reason to sell down the line, I would say, okay, go for it. But if you have no reason to sell other than you think you're underwater in this thing, you're not, based on okay. the numbers. Okay, good. So, and, and hopefully the market, it won't decrease in value very anytime soon. No, I, I think it'll cool down eventually. I don't think it's, you're going to lose $100,000 on this deal. It may not be 435 forever, but maybe in five years it is back to 435 and you still live there. So I would still be aggressively paying this thing down. And later down the road, if I'm you, I'm going to refinance. And you can do the math to see when the break-even point would be um, on that. But I would refinance eventually to a 15, or you can just pay it down. I mean, it's at 3%. You've got a, a pretty low interest rate there. So treat this thing like a 10, 15-year mortgage and get this thing out of your life so that you can move on to bigger and better goals. Well, thank you. That puts my mind at ease a little bit. (laughs) That's what I'm here for. I love to hear it. That's so great, Heather. Thank you so much for the call. Good to talk with you. We've got Mitch in Pueblo, Colorado. Mitch, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How How can I help? Hey, so I've got a situation where I have an opportunity to purchase uh, half of what my brother owns on a property we're in on together. Okay. And use it as a uh, rental property. Okay. Okay. He wants to sell and he wants his half so he can invest in something else. I'm thinking more long term and want to leave something for the kids, you know, further on down the line. Uh, problem is, is I don't have cash to buy him out. Mm. So I would need to. Yeah, I would need to borrow uh, seventy, well, sixty-five grand. Do you have a mortgage currently? Home. Yes, we do. Oh boy. Well, this puts you in a bit of a yeah. pickle here. So, what happens if you yeah, don't have I the know. cash? What happens with you with your half? Well, uh, I'm going to try to convince him to, for both of us, to use it as a rental. Okay. For now. But he's saying he wants to get rid of it. He wants to sell it and take the money, take his half. Yes, he wants his half, correct. So I have to try to convince him to use it as a rental until I can come up with half of what the property is valued at so I can purchase his half. I mean, this is – it's basically you're wanting to get into real estate investing right now, but you don't really have the cash flow to do so. That is absolutely right. Do you have any debt other than your personal mortgage? No, none whatsoever. What's your mortgage? What's left on it? Uh, 105, 105,000. And what's your household income? Uh, at this moment in time, it's a little less than 70. 
70. So it's okay. not much. Yeah. Well, what I would do if I'm in your shoes, I'm trying to pay off this mortgage before I jump into real estate investing. And that might be a conversation. I mean, it's family. So, you know, it could get dicey, but hopefully he'll be willing to work with you and go, hey, can we rent this thing out for three years? Let me try to get this house paid mm-hmm. off and, and work up this cash. And over time, maybe you guys can work out a deal. But I'd, I do not like the idea of you borrowing money while you still have a mortgage, getting into this thing, having this anxiety in your life, and trying to pay both of these mortgages, essentially, with the hopes of, of cashing out a little bit or making some rental income. So no, I don't like the idea of you borrowing money. I think it's gonna be a hard conversation with your brother to figure the situation out. But please, for the love of God, don't borrow money when you still have got a mortgage, man. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to Ben Hill, our producer, Kelly Daniel, associate producer and phone screener, and you, America, for tuning in and calling in. 888-825-5225 is the number. We'll be back with you before you know it. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Camel, your host, flying solo today, and it's a free call, 888-825-5225. If you want to hear more from me, uh, the the few of you that may want to, you can find me on the Fine Print and On Trade Leadership Podcasts, both podcasts you can find on the Ramsey Network or wherever great podcasts are found. Open phones this hour, and we are kicking it off with Jesus in El Paso. El Paso, what's up, Jesus? How's it going? Okay, good. And you, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. How can I help today? Okay, so I have a question. That, um, so we were, me and my wife were working on the baby steps, and we paid off 24000 in six months in you know, car payments that we had and everything. Nice. Way to go, man. So the only debt I have right now is my mortgage, which I owe 99, 99K. Okay. Now, I've been thinking, well, as soon as I got out of high school, I started to work. I never went to college or anything. Straight so to the workforce. About, yes, sir. So I've been thinking about going back to technical school for a 19-month period. Okay. You know, just wanted to, you know, some advice on whether it's a good idea or this would be paid with student loans. Oh, boy. Well, that changes things for yeah. me. I mean, I love the idea yeah. of you going to tech school and getting an education, uh, but I don't think you need to do it with student loans. Is there an urgency around you going to tech school? No, it's just that, uh, you know, it just came to mind, you know, to, cause, uh, it's for HVAC that I want to go to school for. Yeah. What are you and, doing uh, now for your career? I'm an automotive technician. Well, I do service for all the automotive dealerships in, in El Paso. Very cool. What's your uh, household income? 45k a year okay and it's just you uh yes i'm the only one working okay so we got 45k a year but you're debt free except for the mortgage do you have a fully funded emergency fund yes all right and are you investing 15 percent of your household income currently no well not at the moment how old are you 27 okay so you're nice and young. That makes me feel better. I want you to get investing, and I want you to cash flow this tech school. How much does this tech school cost for this 19 months? 25K. 25K. And have you done your research as far as uh, schools in the area, online programs, all of the options for this HVAC program? Yes, this is the one that I I, I liked, you know, everything they offered. And, I, and I've had uh, buddies of mine that have gone there and they they always recommend that school. And they had a good experience. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any way to get your income up? Is there a way that your your wife could work or you could take on a side job to get a bigger shovel? Well, the thing is that I work from 7 in the morning to sometimes 7 at night, 8 at night. So, you work in 12-hour days? Yeah, at times, yes. Man. Is there another yeah. uh, job in this field currently that you could jump over to and make more money? Right now, that's the reason I wanted to move to HVAC because – I, I'm pretty much stuck um, from an apprentice uh, technician and and the sales reps, which I mean the sales reps are all taking up all the positions, and those guys are going nowhere. Yeah. So, well, I want you to explore your options for another job that's in the field you're in currently, so that you can get a bigger shovel, so that you can cash flow the college uh, experience and get to this tech school. Because twenty five k, I mean, it's it's not a small amount of money compared to your income, but you don't have any debt, and so any extra money you could be using to save up for that. And because there's no real urgency other than, hey, I want to switch into this field, you could wait another year to go to tech school. There's nothing driving you to go tomorrow, right? Right. Okay. I mean, be looking for any kind of scholarships that might be available, grants, talk to the school, talk to the guidance counselors. I want you to really do some some deep research here and do some deep work to figure out all of the options. I don't want you to just go, well, I'm out of options. I got to take out student loans. Guess I'm going to do that, especially when there's no urgency around this. Yes. Other than, hey, I'm not super happy with what, what I'm doing now. Uh, but I love your passion for, for going into the HVAC field. I think that's fantastic. I'm a big uh, proponent of the trades. But I don't want you to fall into the 45 million Americans with $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. I don't want you added to that stat. Okay. So I would talk to your wife and figure out a plan uh, to where you guys can cash flow this experience, and whenever you have the money is when you can do it. You're going to move at the speed of cash here. Uh, that is the best game plan. Uh, and if you aren't strapped with student loan payments, America, the odds are you know someone who is. This is a hot topic, and millions of people are putting their lives on hold. They can't buy a house or have kids because they are stuck. Or even worse, they're waiting and waiting and waiting for the government to save them with student loan forgiveness. What a joke. Have you seen the stats on this thing? Public service loan forgiveness program. 2%. That's the amount of people who actually had their loans forgiven. Out of everyone who applied. 2%. I'm not taking those chances. You're better off in Vegas at this point. Our team produced a brand new feature length film documentary called Borrowed Future. It launched last week. It was on all the charts on Amazon, Google Play, Apple TV, all the places. And it's out now. You can go watch this thing. And it's 88 minutes long, and it's something that you can show to your kids, to your friends, your family. Uh, have a party. Get some popcorn. It's riveting. It uncovers the dark side of the student loan industry. Is there a bright side? I don't know, but we uncover the dark side. And it exposes how the system is built to work against you. You'll see Dave Ramsey weigh in on the epic failure otherwise known as the student loan program, along with featured interviews from industry insiders and thought leaders like Seth Godin, Seth Frotman, and Dr. John Deloney. We're coming hard at this, folks. We're swinging at the student loan problem with the goal to arm parents and students across the country with the truth. And here it is. You do not have to take out loans to get a college education. Jesus doesn't have to do it, and you don't either. You can be a student without a student loan. It's possible. You can graduate debt-free and avoid the predatory student loan industry. And we feature all kinds of inspiring stories, heartbreaking stories in this documentary. You've got to go watch this thing. It's just a few bucks to rent, and I promise you uh, it's, it's the price of your latte. So skip one latte and go watch Borrowed Future. You can uh, watch it on Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video, Google Play, or you can watch it from our website, borrowedfuture.com. And the stats on this are mind-blowing. America's student loan debt has grown from $240 billion to $1.58 trillion since 2003. One in four U.S. households have student loan debt, with the average borrower carrying $38,792. Y'all, this is the biggest crisis that my generation has to face. And you can get out. You don't have to wait for forgiveness. You don't have to pay it off for 20 years. You can do this thing. But you've got to be aware of the traps. You've got to be willing to change and make some sacrifices to get rid of the student loan debt once and forever. Sally Mae is not your friend. Navient is not your friend. Make a decision to change your legacy, to change the way you handle your money. 
This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. To the Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print Podcast and Entree Leadership Podcast. Open phones this hour. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Call me with your money question. I would be happy to take it. And Reggie did that in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Reggie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you for taking my call there, George. Absolutely. Uh, How can I help? Question. I would like to know what would be the best way to invest $10,000 so that it's liquid, so that it's accessible for things like purchasing a car. And, and for me, home improvements, you know, renovating a home, being able to have access to it. But it makes enough money that I can do those things. So you want your money to make money? Yes, sir. I love that. Well, you have, you have two conflicting words here, invest and liquid. And when I hear liquid, it makes me think I would not invest that. Now, if this is a long-term goal, we're talking five years out, and you want it to be liquid, sure, you could invest that in you know, just a normal brokerage account outside of retirement in some mutual funds or index funds and have that money grow for you. But it sounds like these, these short-term goals of yours, this is less than five years on the horizon, correct? Yes. Okay. At that point, I know it's not fun, it's not that sexy, but I would park that in a high-yield savings account, which right now will get you about a half a percent. Okay, high-yield savings. Is that disappointing to hear, a half a percent? Oh, yes. Well, here, here's the good news. If you invest that money, you might lose 5 or 10 or 15 percent. You tracking with me, Reggie? What I want here is to keep your money safe. So it's going to grow at a very small rate. But right now, I would not be throwing this money into the market when it, it could become 5K instead of 10 if you need this thing six months from now. Um, what if I just want to wait for a year, hold it for a year, and see what it has done for me and then do the time horizon on that is still too short where you're going to see it's too much of a roller coaster. When you look at the market on the long term, it, it's a steadier incline. But when you look at the short term, man, it is a roller coaster and that money's going to get jostled around. And if you need that thing and in, in under, you know, it, within that under three year time frame, I just think it's real dicey to be investing that money. I mean, it's not going to turn into 20K. We're not going to go investing in you know some hot cryptocurrency and hope for the best year. We don't want to gamble this money away. You've worked hard for this money, and so the thing that you right. can do is protect it. Uh, so I would, if I'm you, I'm putting in a high yield savings account. Do you currently have any debt? No, no debt. No debt, and you have a fully funded emergency fund. Fully funded, yes. All right, and you're investing fifteen percent into retirement. Yes. Okay, you're on track, Reg. You're doing great. How old are you? Uh, 54. 54 years old. Fantastic. And uh, what are those short-term goal goals that you mentioned? You said house repairs and what else? Uh, home improvements. You know, the house is a little dated. want to, like, improve it and add on. It's a ranch style. So add on a uh, garage okay. and uh, make room for purchase of a 
new vehicles instead of buying another you used upgrade. vehicle. They well, always saying pay cash, pay cash, pay cash. Yeah, well, I would still pay cash. Like, Are you I'm a millionaire? Money to pay cash. Not yet. Okay. I'm on my way. Until you're there, I wouldn't be buying a brand new car. Now, you said new car. That may just mean upgrading to a nicer slightly used car, but I want you paying cash for that. And these home repairs, instead of hoping your money grows in that high yield savings account, just start a sinking fund. Start saving up every single month. You have no debt. And so you can just throw you know, a few hundred bucks a month into that high yield savings account and watch it grow at that half a percent. But I think you've got this. You're not. I, I would not recommend throwing this money into the market when you're going to need it six months, a year from now. Thanks for the call. Jackie joins us in San Antonio. Jackie, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, um, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can I help? Hey, um, I have a question. We are working on our debt snowball. We have about 23000 left on our regular snowball, and then I kind of have our whatever I have in collection separate um, to pay once we're done with our regular snowball. And I've gotten served, and I have a judgment against me for one of the collections. And my question is, should I pay that off first? and then continue working on our snowball, or should I just let them hang out until I get to them? What kind of debt is this in collections? It's a credit card. Okay. How much debt? Um, the balance on the account is 5200 and I've called them before to try and settle, and the lowest they would offer me was 3600 and I just didn't have that at the time. I could probably settle for that amount now, um, but I would obviously want to negotiate a little bit lower if I could. I would, uh, yeah, I mean, you can try to negotiate lower, and if they give you a lower number, I would just pay that settlement in full and then continue on with the debt snowball. I don't like that there's a judgment them against out of my you. Life. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, I mean, I feel anxiety, and it's not even my debt in collection. Yeah. And the rest of the debt snowball, what's the other kind of debt? Um, all credit cards, pretty much, in a car. Okay. We've been on a spending spree. This has been fun. Uh, a little bit. It's It's been a, a journey, that's for sure. But now there's a judgment, so it got a lot less fun. Yeah. And you got to pay yeah. the piper. Okay. So yeah, I would I would go ahead and uh, negotiate with them if they can. But really, I mean, it's it, the debt is the debt, and if they're unwilling to budge, uh, I wouldn't push it too much further. I want to I want to get this out of my life. Do you have a thirty six hundred on hand? Um, kind of yes. Uh, we refinanced our house, so I have a refund on our escrow account that's coming back. So I will have that money. Okay. Well, make sure your four walls are taken care of. It sounds like you're doing okay in that category. Right? Yes, you got food on the table, yes. utilities are being paid, all that stuff? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would get this collections mess cleaned up because of the judgment involved here, and the, it's a little bit of a fire. And I want to put this fire out and then continue on with my life with the traditional debt snowball. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate it. Let's move to Chris in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Chris, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I I have a question. I have uh, about a hundred thousand in a mutual fund, uh, no debt with exception to the mortgage, which is about a hundred and thirty thousand. And so I was wondering if you think I should apply that mutual fund to the mortgage and try to start getting that mortgage taken care of and out of the way. Okay, so we're completely debt free outside of the mortgage. The mortgage is one hundred thirty thousand, and you have a hundred thousand in mutual funds. Is this just non retirement, just in a general brokerage account? Yes, it's just in a general brokerage account. Yeah, I'm cashing that thing out and slapping it on the mortgage. Have you ever had okay. uh, Have you ever had any point in your life where you didn't have a mortgage, just completely debt free, paid for? No, house? Uh, I have not. <laughs> How would it feel to not have to pay that mortgage ever again? Uh, is I've been dreaming about it, so I, I, I would love to see that. I would love to see it, too. How old are you, Chris? 47. 47. And you're real close to having a paid-off house, man. That would be nice. I love it. I can I hear it in your voice. I'm excited for you. Yeah, I don't. I would cash out this mutual fund. Uh, we always tell people if it's in retirement, don't touch it. But you just have this outside of retirement, and so this is liquid money that you could use today to pay down this mortgage. And you can get to investing later. You're gonna have plenty of time to invest. Okay. Okay. Well, great. Great. I appreciate that. Man, you are crushing it, Chris. Hundred thousand dollars in liquid cash, and he'll 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 be down to thirty thousand on that mortgage, and uh, get rid of that thing in no time. Hey, call us up when you're when you're completely debt free, or come to a debt free scream. 
I'd love to hear that story. What an incredible guy. Guys, a lot of fun calls on the show today. A lot of, a lot of mix. We've got a lot of house housing questions, a lot of people moving around. They're maybe uh, starting to rethink some things uh, due to the pandemic or the great resignation going, hey, I live here, but I don't have to live here. Should I move? Hey, I want to go back to school. Should I take on the student loans? Um, I have a budgeting problem. I've got a debt problem. These are all things that I love to help people with. So call me up. The number is 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Camel Ramsey personality flying solo today on the Ramsey show. Give me a call, 888 825 5225. You know, I love going out during the breaks of the show and meeting our amazing guests who travel from all over the country to see the headquarters, to hang out. Uh, a lot of people come to celebrate where they've where they've come on their money journey. So I want to encourage you guys. We are just south of Nashville, Tennessee. It's a great trip. And whoever's hosting the show that day, they're all waving. Look at them on the screen there if you're watching. Uh, and it's a great time. We'll give you a, a free Ramsey Show mug. We'll load you up with uh, free coffee, free baked goods and cookies. You can get uh, your, your picture made, all that fun stuff. We've got a little museum uh, back there, a hallway where you can walk and see the history of this place. Place. And the team did an incredible job with the whole experience. So come down, make a trip of it. A lot of families do that. They'll make it a pit stop on the road trip. And our team is very friendly and they'll be happy to host you. You can go to RamseySolutions.com and schedule your visit. We'll let you know what's going on that day and make sure we are ready for your arrival. All right, let's go to the phone lines this hour. Elizabeth is in Las Vegas, Nevada. Elizabeth, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Sure, how can I help? Um, so, um, I'm currently on baby step six, my husband and I, and, um, we're in the process of making sure that we are putting money towards our retirement. I currently have about 250 K, um, prior to the marriage. And, um, my husband has always said that he has money within this family trust, but he has no control over it. And he sees that as part of our retirement savings. Um, and I'm trying to find a good way to kind of persuade him to understand um, in like a loving way that um, if we have no control over it, then that means that we can't plan for our future with that money. If it comes to us later on down the line, extra money, great. But right now we need to kind of follow and stick to a plan with that not being in mind. Yeah. Any um, suggestions? I'm with you on that one. Uh, how much has, does he have saved in retirement? Um. For probably maybe two thousand currently, um, he transitioned from a new job um, into a role here in the U.S., and so this is all new to him. Oh, okay. So he's new to investing in general. Investing in general, correct. It's all been kind of controlled by the family. His dad passed away and left them money, and they all just sort of decided to leave it to the mom to do everything with. So there's nothing legally in that regard to his name, even. Whoa. So mom can just say, hey, I'm not giving you a dime of this. In theory, yes. 
Yeah. Oh boy. We uh, trust him, but in theory, yes. Yeah, but there's no there's no legal things going on here to where he's going to get a hundred thousand dollars when he turns a certain age. There's none of that. It's not. No, it's not considered like that. It's more of a retirement that the three siblings have with the mom. So what's the um, agreement then, that what's the agreement with this trust? When does he get this? Money? It's in theory they each of them can pull out money when they want. We've had instances where one of the siblings had talked about it, and then they all came to a consensus and decided that wasn't a good idea. So they that particular sibling didn't. Um, so. You know, I believe in the family. They're fantastic. They're super loving. It's not an issue of not trusting them. It's just that we have no control over it. I don't even know what, how much is in there, what it's accruing, anything like that. So in that regards, my husband's like, well, I don't want to pull the money out. So again, in my eyes, it just I see it as down the line. If we get it, great. But currently, we have to just focus on what we are doing yeah. with the money that we have control over. Absolutely. So how old are you two? Um, I'm 33 and he's 46. 46? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys are way off from retirement. Um, I would continue investing 15% of your household income into retirement. Uh, are you guys debt free? Um, other than the mortgage. And I think we'll be able to pay that off in about two years. We're, um, we have an apartment in, um, overseas that we're looking to probably sell, but I think it'll take about six months before we even start that process. Okay. Well, that puts you guys in a good position to, you know, build wealth and give generously when you're in baby step seven there. So I'm not as worried as far as your retirement, but I do want him to understand that if it's out of his control, then we can't include that. Now, the day that he pulls the money out and it's in your bank account and in your investments, then we can say, okay, this is part of our retirement. So I'm with you on that. I think you're, you may need some outside third-party opinions on this. So if I'm you, I'm going to contact a SmartVestor Pro in your area. These are investing pros that can walk you guys through your situation and go, all right, here's what I'm seeing for your retirement plan. Are you on track based on all of the factors involved that are in your control? So that's what I would do because when you're hearing it from an investment professional uh, versus, you know, just his wife, it may come across differently. Yeah, because I think it comes across as maybe I know better or that I'm trying to be controlling. And I think you're right. I think coming, I can coming from somebody who's quote unquote an expert, it comes across better and maybe he would listen. Yeah, I don't want this to cause a rift in the in the marriage. So you can jump on RamseySolutions.com and click on Trusted Pros, get in touch with an investing pro in the Vegas area. It'll show you, you know, five options there when you enter your information and sit down with them and then just lay out all the information you laid out with me and they can get you on a path and go, hey, here's here's what you're on track to do. Is this good enough? Is this what you know, does this line up with your goals? And uh, I think you're you're right here, but I don't want this to make this an argument of who's right and who's wrong. And I know that's not your heart exactly. behind this either. So no. uh, yeah. get with a smart investor pro and have them lay it out for him. And hopefully that changes his mind. But he's not in control of the money. And so therefore, I'm not counting it. It's icing on the cake if he does get it down the line. Thanks for the call. Matthew is in Jackson, Mississippi. Matthew, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can I help? So uh, I am a pastor, and as a pastor, I live in a church-owned parsonage, and so we are looking to save uh, eventually for a house, possibly when I get closer to retirement, which is going to be probably 25, 30 years down the road. And uh, our current plan had been to use uh, contributions to a Roth IRA uh, to uh, put towards that eventual down payment and hoping to pay it off. To you know, buy it in cash completely. Love that. Uh, and wanted to get your opinion about that. Um, I had spoken to. We have a financial advisor uh, firm that uh, is available to us through the United Methodist Church. I'm a Methodist pastor, and so they had uh, suggested to us that instead of contributing toward a Roth for the house, but Instead, piling all that we could into our 403B that we have that I have through the conference, and then using um, so saving and tax saving, and then also we're able to um, make a loan of half of the amount that we contribute uh, at the point that we buy the house, and that was their way of uh, of saving towards the house. Uh, so I just wanted to get another opinion about. You know, which idea is better uh, in in what we're looking at? 
So if I'm hearing you correctly, your financial advisor said to dump it in the 403B and then take a 403B loan out to get the house. Yes. Yikes. And, that, and his, 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 uh, so his, the reason behind it was you save taxes on the front end and you're paying yourself back with the loan. And my thought is if we put it in the Roth, because I know we can use the Roth to help buy the house and make either a huge down payment or pay it off completely. And it's, you know, we can do it early if we end up finding ourselves in a situation uh, where we need a house prior to retirement. You know, if I move to a church that doesn't have a parsonage and yeah. I need to purchase a house. Uh, and so it kind of conflicts with what he was saying. And so I wanted to get another perspective on that. I uh, about. I don't see the benefit in doing this. I, I mean, I don't understand the full tax benefits of what he's saying, but taking out a loan when you have the cash to pay for a house is asinine. And so I think you might need a new financial right. advisor. Uh, I would get in touch with one of our SmartVestor pros, what I would tell you to do is to park this money into some good mutual funds, uh, just in a brokerage account outside of retirement. I don't want you using your retirement money to purchase the house. You're going to unplug all that growth that you're going to need to live on for the rest of your life. So that's what I would do if I'm in your shoes. And to get that process started, get in touch with one of our SmartVestor pros at RamseySolutions.com and they can help you do things the Ramsey way without debt. You don't need to take on a loan, man. You're going to save up and pay for the same cash. We're talking 25, 30 years from now and you're following the Ramsey plan. You got this. Don't listen to your financial advisor. Get a new one. This is The Ramsey Show. show. I'm George Campbell, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. Flying solo today, taking your calls. The number is 888-825-5225. Let's talk money. Call me up. Micah is in Dayton, Ohio. Micah, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can I help today? Um, I've just got a question. Um, I'm relatively new to listening to you guys, so I'm still kind of learning the baby steps and things of that nature. But I also got a suggestion um, with my life insurance. I currently have term life insurance. My wife and I both do. And um, I was advised from my financial advisor to go ahead and swap over to whole life, which was going to be like $220 a month versus I think we're paying like $34 right now for the term insurance. And it would basically be... um, I think the same dollar amount of coverage, but I would have the death benefit past, you know, where I guess my whole life. And, but it just seems to me like it's a lot of money to, to put on the month. But I also, I think I heard that it, you guys don't really think that would be a wise decision. I was kind of wondering why I'm just really completely new to all this. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the call. If you could see my face, I was almost laughing. Uh, and I have a very honest question for you. If you could, if you know the answer, does your financial advisor sell whole life insurance? Yes, also a concern. Ding, ding, ding! We have our answer. Okay, so let's do let's do some quick math here. What do you think your financial advisor is going to make more money on? Your term life insurance that's about the cost of a pizza, or is he going to make more commissions off of a $220 a month premium? Uh, definitely the $220. <laughs> and he even said that the first two or three years would go toward basically paying, from what I understand, paying him and whoever was a part of that back. And then it would turn into like a savings plan, which is kind of what he was pitching as far as for me to, the reason for me to do it. Yeah. Oh, I bet. <laughs> and I bet he sees dollar signs sparkling in the in his future if he can get you to switch over. Um, you need to get a new financial advisor today. Okay. You need to yeah, think, find someone think, with the heart of a teacher who's not out to make a buck off of you, but is going to help you do things the Ramsey way and help you uh, make smart decisions with your financial future. And I can tell you why we don't recommend whole life, but that, it's a whole other discussion from the fact that this guy is trying to make more commission off of you. That's it. 
you really think has I mean he told me that like he thinks that I have a good short term and a good long term as far as my savings and retirement and he was his what he said was he wanted me to have like kind of a medium ground like five, ten, fifteen years from now if I need something to draw from. But I mean I was kind of thinking, why don't I just do that through a normal savings account? Like I don't really understand what the benefit was. So that kind of makes sense that it was possibly yeah, this guy is trying to screw you, and here's why whole life really sucks. It's a lot more expensive, which you already know. It's trying to do two financial jobs at once. It's trying to be insurance, and it's trying to be an investing vehicle. Uh, and it ends up ne- doing neither thing very well. It delays or stops you from ever becoming self-insured, which is why we teach you to get term life insurance, and once it runs out, you're in a place financially where you don't need it. And it can lead to having a huge amount of your cash value in the policy disappear if you die without cashing it out. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I would jump on RamseySolutions.com and get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro uh, who can lead you to much better financial decisions. Because this guy is out to make a commission, and that tells me that he doesn't have the heart of a teacher. I'm sure he's a a fine person, but he's a terrible financial advisor. He's just trying to make money off of it. Yeah, that's what kind of stinks. Like, I really do hope like he seems like a good guy, but I know that's probably part of the job, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's less of a good guy okay. now in my book, uh, but you can still be friends with him, but I would not let – I wouldn't take financial advice from this dude. Uh, I would get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro uh, who has the heart of a teacher who's going to show you what you're doing and why, and they're going to do things the Ramsey way. And what we teach is to get that term life 15 to 20 years level uh, that's 10 to 12 times your income for each of you, which it sounds like you've got good term life in place. You're doing the right things. Stay on track. Do not listen to this buffoon. Thanks for the call. Josh is in Tampa, Florida. Josh, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How Um, can I help? Yeah, so my wife and I, 10 years, um, we've been going through counseling and we've been trying to save our marriage, but we decided um, it was best that we get a divorce Mm. at the end of this year. I'm sorry to hear that. So, yeah, um, yeah, we 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 tried a lot, and now I'm really just kind of looking forward and seeing, you know, what would you guys do if you woke up in my shoes? So, um, I have a I have some cash saved, and there will be additional cash once we sell our home that we own together in equity. So that'll be a, approximately one hundred eighty thousand. So my my question is, if you woke up in my shoes and you had one hundred eighty thousand, um, what would you what would you do? Um, I'm kind of torn between trying to buy a house cash and or trying to invest in more passive income, whether that be real estate or um, a business venture. Hmm. Well, Josh, but I'm I'm trying to just make the best decision. Yeah. I totally understand that, and I'm so sorry to hear what you've gone through, and it's easy to be in your shoes and, and get there because I've been there, and I know what it's like to, to deal with the aftermath of a, of a broken marriage. Obviously, 10 years is a long time, and I, want, I'm, I care more about Josh right now than I do about Josh's money. It sounds like you're mm-hmm. in a fine place financially, but I, you need to grieve this. You need to just take a pause, take a breath. There's no urgency around this. The money's going to be there tomorrow, three months from now, six months from now. So I want you to take a breather and maybe you get counseling on your own to grieve and and heal and do whatever you need to do to get Josh well. And then we can deal with the money. Okay. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay. Um, Are there kids involved? What's the ramifications of all this? One, one, One kid. Okay. Well, is, is everything finalized? No, not yet. Okay. I would let the the dust settle here, um, finalize everything. And once you have this pile of money, I want you to just wait and get some wise counsel, get some people in your corner, maybe get a tax pro, um, a real estate pro. If you're, if you're wanting to get into that later on, make sure you have a financial advisor who's helping guide this money. It sounds like you've got a good head on your shoulders on what to do with it. Um, I would put it towards your next goal. You know, filter it through the framework of the baby steps. It sounds like you're debt-free? Um, more or less. There's like 3000 I owe in a car, and I don't have any credit card debt or student loan debt. Okay. Do you have an emergency fund in it's, place? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I have uh, forty thousand, like eighty thousand total saved, and wow, half is half is in, in a brokerage account, and the other half is in a uh, bank account. I would I would cash out that brokerage account. I'll get out of that uh, that debt, pay that thing off, become completely debt free, park that three to six months of emergency. I'd probably lean towards six months in your situation, going through what you're going through. Um, are you investing fifteen percent okay. after that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I I have like a hundred and seventy thousand in my four hundred one k, so it's it's like I'm good with retirement. <laughs> Okay, so you're you're on track for a solid retirement. I would get rid of this debt and just live a debt-free lifestyle. That's going to take away. You already have enough stress and and drama here, and that debt is just going to add to it. So get out of debt. Never look back. Have that emergency fund. Look forward to whatever that house purchase may be down the road. And I would use that money towards that. I wouldn't get into real estate investing or anything uh, shiny right now. I would focus it on whatever your next primary residence is. Use that as a giant down payment uh, aside from your emergency fund while investing. And I don't know what the financials look like um, with the child in the mix and child support and custody and all that. I'm sure you're still working some of that out. But I would put Mm -hmm. it towards that primary residence and try to get that paid off. And then we can focus on if you want to do some real estate investing down the road when you're in baby step seven, that's a fine choice to make. Okay. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Josh, I'm so, I'm so sorry for what you're going through, man. Divorce is so difficult and emotionally taxing, physically taxing, financially taxing. And so take your time with this. There's no rush. You're in a good place financially. You've got a big pile of money. So just take care of Josh right now. And the money part will take care of itself later on. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to Ben Hill, our producer, Kelly Daniel, our associate producer and phone screener, and you, America. This is your show, and we appreciate you listening in. We'll be back with you before you know it. Until then, this has been The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's the Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. Open phones this hour, 888-825-5225. Now, if you're wondering who this guy is hosting the show solo, let me fill you in. I'm not quite the new guy. I've been on the team here at Ramsey for over eight years. I started as an intern and a temp back in 2013. And I followed these steps. I came in the door with $40,000 in debt. And I, I realized, you know, if I'm going to work here for a long time, I want to follow this plan and make sure it's, it actually works. And so I did that, and I became debt-free in about 18 months. And I started following this plan, and I met my wife here. She still works here. It's fantastic. Great carpool buddy. And we had this ba- big, hairy, audacious goal to be in baby step seven in our early 30s. And in early 2022, we're going to pay off our house and we are so, so excited. And let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not special. No inheritance here. No wild incomes. Just diligence. Just decided that we wanted a different life for our family. We wanted to f- change our family tree. We wanted to be able to live and give like no one else and take out landish vacations and do some really fun stuff and not have to wait until retirement. So that's my heart. My heart is to help other people in their 20s and their 30s get a hold of this stuff and realize that they don't have to wait on the government or some legislation or uh, the jackpot in order to live their dreams and live their best financial life, that they could pay off their debt and they could start investing and have emergency savings to not have to swipe a credit card to get by. And so if that's you, give me a call. 
888-825-5225. I'd love to help you out in any way I can. We're going to go to Robert in Knoxville, Tennessee. Robert, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Well, afternoon, actually. It's all right. Time flies yeah. when we're having fun. How can I help today? I have a question of uh, should I do it. Uh, I'm 59. Uh, I have no debt, no car loans, no student loans. Owe about 65000 on the house. And my wife's car is close to 18 years old. Uh, been paid off for a good 10 years at least. Um, and if my money market account's getting one half of one percent, and a car loan is going to be expected to be four and a half to five percent, shouldn't I just take it out of savings and go ahead and pay off the car in full, just to be done with it? And uh, technically, I'm saving four and a half percent, right? Are you saying to pay for the car in cash, or are you saying you're wanting to take out a loan? Pay for the car in cash. That's what I'm thinking I should do. Oh, and you're saying, well, it's normal for people to just take out a car loan. And you're saying, why would I do yeah. that? At four and a half percent. I don't, yeah. I mean, we're in the boat of I don't care what the interest rate is. If it's one percent or 70 percent, we think it's dumb to take on any debt of any kind and that you're better off paying cash for it, especially a depreciating asset like a car. So you're, you've got the right yeah. mentality around it. What's this car uh, going to cost? Uh, 40000 It's a used Mercedes. Okay. Are you guys... Uh, three years old anyway. Yeah. What's your household income? Uh, about 85000 Uh We've got about 200000 in each other's savings account plus another three fifty and two other retirement accounts. And I have a fully funded emergency fund that uh, is 60000 just sitting there. Hold up. Hold up. You've got $200,000 in cash? Oh, in the bank, sure. And you have a $65,000 mortgage? Yes. Is it a pet? Why are you keeping it around? Pay this thing off today. I was planning on doing that in early 2022. But the, Why not the, the late 2021? Because, it, because the car was the question. The older car, 17, 18 years old, is getting older. and But you've got the money to do both. Liability. You could pay off the car and buy that Mercedes today. You could pay off Probably the mortgage and buy the car. At 59, I've, I've probably got another good eight years before I retire, right? Okay. But you've got this money in liquid cash. Yes. So the question is, so why are you holding on to the mortgage? Well, true, too. Nice point. <laughs> I mean, I if I'm you, I want to be debt-free, baby step seven, living and giving like no one else today. You guys have worked really hard to, to have all this big pile of money. And it's not working very hard for you when you're sitting there paying a lender every month. Right. So what do you say okay. you pay off the mortgage today? Uh, do you have any other vehicles currently? Uh, yes, I have a, a, an old 7, uh, I don't know, Chevy Cobalt. That, that hey, no joke. I had, I had an 07 Chevy Cobalt. Still runs. I think, I think I'm talking to my future self, hopefully. Are you a millionaire? <laughs> Are you, is your net no, worth I'd over like a million? Me. What is your net worth? Oh, off the top of my head, maybe a half a million. Okay. Well, I mean, it's an expensive car uh, based on your income. We we have kind of a parameter that your everything with a motor in it should add up to no more than half of your income. And so you're edging up close to it. You're not in terrible financial shape, obviously. So uh, you're okay. But I wouldn't go any any crazier than that car right now. Okay. And you do have a pile of money, so it makes me feel a whole lot better about this. But uh, is the mortgage your only debt? Yes, sir. Man, I'm getting rid of that thing today. And I'm going to be on the car lot tomorrow, and I'm going to be driving away with that Mercedes. And you're still going to have plenty of money sitting in cash in the bank. Are you guys okay. on track for retirement? Uh, I believe so, yes. Because it sounds like you're, you're heavily weighted in liquid cash and not a ton in retirement investing right now. Is that right? Uh, I got two retirement accounts through various jobs. Okay. But they, they don't add up to more than a half million total without all of your assets. No, those two are only about, uh, about, uh, 180 to 225,000. Yeah. That's my only caveat here is 
you don't have a ton in retirement right now if you plan on retiring soon. So I wouldn't, if I'm you, I'm, I'm taking a pause here and going, okay, let me, what's best for my financial future in retirement? Is it buying a $40,000 car that's going to depreciate in value? Or should I really be focused on building that retirement nest egg so that I can retire at 65? Okay. Well, I got to wait till 67, don't I? No, you don't have to wait. Everybody says. No, absolutely. I mean, what are you waiting until 67 for? Because I like my work, I guess. Oh, well, you can keep working, but I want to make sure that you've got enough money to live on in retirement when you decide. I like to have options. I don't know about you, Robert, but I want to be able to retire when I want to and not when I have to. So there's no law saying you have to retire 67. You can work till you're 85. I think Dave Ramsey will. He just loves to work, but he could also stop working today and it'd be no issue. All right. Man, sorry, you're you're in a good you're gonna in a good spot, Robert. But uh, I would be questioning this retirement savings before I jump on this forty thousand dollar car. You got this pile of money. I might invest that money and let it grow, so that you've got a big old retirement nest egg. But you've done a really really good job, and I want to see all this mortgage uh, paid off. You got this, man. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Show open phone lines this hour, 888 5225 The last 18 months have been a lot, haven't they? A lot of worry, a lot of wondering what would happen next. Maybe that's how you feel about your money too. Tired, stuck, stretched thin. But it doesn't have to be that way. You just need a plan. A plan gives you confidence even when everything else seems out of control. And that plan is Financial Peace University. This class will teach you everything you need to know to save money, pay off debt, and build wealth for the future. You can stream the lessons on your own or get support by going through the class with others. Then you'll put that plan into practice with the premium version of our Every Dollar Budgeting app. By syncing your bank to your budget, you can easily track your spending and see where your money goes. And you get all of this only with a Ramsey Plus membership. You don't have to stay exhausted and overwhelmed. You can win with money. To start your free trial of Ramsey Plus, text TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. Ken joins us in Augusta, Georgia. Ken, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you. How can I help today? How are you guys doing? Great. It's just me here. It's lonely, but I'm making it. Good, good deal. Hey, I just got a quick question for you. Um, in the past, I've been... Uh, sucked up into the leverage, 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 and I'm starting to just look at different ways of doing stuff and came across uh, Ramsey in the past three to six months. Um, I've got one vehicle payment and going to be paying that off probably within the next four to four to six weeks. Okay. But I'll be starting to hit the, I'll be starting to hit the uh, house and I also have three investment properties. What I'm thinking about doing is taking the, the house and paying that down so it's below the PMI and then starting hitting the investment properties. What do you think of that? 
Well, uh, I think I think you're trying to do a lot of things at once right now. You've got some debt. Is the car loan your only debt other than the investment properties and your mortgage? Yes. Do you have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses? Yes. Okay. So we're in good shape there. If I'm in your shoes, I want this primary mortgage gone before I continue in this real, real estate investing journey. So as far as paying it down, I mean, if you're – do you do you love all the properties? Would you be willing to sell one in order to pay off your primary mortgage? Well, uh, selling one wouldn't pay off the primary mortgage. They cash flow really, really well. They're doing great for me, so I really am not super excited about selling any of them. Okay. Well, so at the, the very least, I would I, I would attack the primary mortgage first because you live there. If they uh, if the bank comes after the the investment properties, you're going to be okay. But you live in this primary residence, so I want this one gone first. And I've heard that also in the past, but I could also sell it even if I have uh, no mortgage on the investment property. I could still sell that if the bank comes after me for my personal property. Sure. I just don't want anyone coming after you for nothing. And so I want to put myself in a solid financial position to where I don't have to worry about any of that. And so I want, the, the way we teach it is you're paying off your primary residence first before we are building wealth through investment properties. And so you've already got them and they're, they're creating cash flow. I'm not going to make you sell them. Uh, but I do want you to aggressively pay off your mortgage and get that out of your hair. And uh, you'll have even more cash flow then. And then you can work on paying down the rest of the investment properties until you have four paid-for properties. Yeah, and I guess what I was looking at also is I could have all those all those investment properties paid off in a year and then come back and pay off the uh, personal property, but I understand what you're saying. Well, how soon can you have all four paid off if you attack your primary mortgage first? Uh, three to four years. Well... I'm doing the long game here and getting rid of that primary mortgage. I mean, is this primary mortgage a big chunk of your income? No. Um, our gross uh, gross income is about three fifty, and the uh, primary mortgage is three thirty five. The investments are fifty five. Uh, the balance due on the investments is fifty five, eighty five, and one twenty five. Well, you got a fabulous income. You could pay this thing off in no time on your primary mortgage and then start attacking those investment properties. That's the way I would do it, and that's that's the way we teach it. Uh, but you do, you can, but you're, you're doing great. You guys have a fabulous income, and uh, clearly you, you enjoy real estate investing. I just want you to do it in the least risky way possible. And so getting rid of that primary mortgage is going to be the way to do that. Thanks for the call. Justin joins us in Glendale, Arizona. Justin, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thanks. How are you today? Doing great. How can I help? Yeah, I got a kind of what would you do situation. Oh, these are fun. Me and my uh, <laughs> right, me and my wife are renting. We were renting a house from her grandfather. He decided to sell it to us for uh, around two hundred thousand, and it appraised for four forty right now. Wow. Um, he, he's actually given us fifteen in cash on top to just kind of help out his granddaughter. He was going to give her the house screen clear, but he decided he couldn't really do that. So this is what he's doing for us. Okay. Um, we, we don't have any car loans or any debt. I have maybe $1,200 on some credit cards. I was honestly getting ready to pay off. Um, should I pull out some of this equity to fix the house up? The house is in good condition, but there are some things that are wrong with it. I'd like to get done. Um, and then also i you know, me and my wife have only been married for a couple of years, and I don't have really any real retirement or savings going right now. So, do you have an emergency fund? I have five thousand. You got five thousand, and you have twelve hundred on credit cards. Yep. Dude, pay that credit card off today. Is that the only right. debt in your life? That's about it right now. What's about it? Is there more here? What's the full story? No, there's that, no okay. that's it. I had one, I have one credit card. I, I'm, a, I'm an avid hunter, so I have one credit card I was using to put stuff on to get the points. Uh -huh. And then I usually will let that go about six months, ro revolving and rotating, and then I end up paying it off when my hunting season's over. Well, look at that. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Go listen to our credit card rewards episode of The Fine Print. Hopefully that will change your mind on this whole rewards thing. It's a scam, man, and uh, I don't want you falling for it anymore. You guys have a bright future. You've got an incredible opportunity here. But what you're asking me is should we use a HELOC to get this house fixed up, correct? Correct. The answer to that is a resounding no. 
the HELOC is going to put your home at risk. Uh, it's probably going to have a variable interest rate, and it's going to set you guys back in the long run. Right. And so what I would do is cash flow these repairs as you can. Uh, can you get into this? Uh, you're you're in the house right now? We are, yeah. Renting. Uh, it's in escrow right now. I should close on the 30th. Okay. And you can afford this mortgage? Absolutely. All right. On in, Are you getting a 15-year fixed? Uh, it's 30-year. Oh, boy. Is it too late to switch? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, glad I caught you at least in this moment to stop you from from doing the HELOC. What we recommend is 25% of your take-home pay on a 15-year fix. That's what I want the mortgage to be uh, because I don't want you to be house poor. But on the HELOC side, right. absolutely do not – do don't mess with a HELOC. Don't do that. Okay. It's going to be a nightmare, and when you go through that line of credit, it's going to come uh, – that balance is going to come due in full, and the bank can take your home. And so this is putting you in a real risky financial position that I don't want you guys in as you, uh, you know, you're know you in this, these early stages of this marriage. I want as little anxiety as possible. So avoid the HELOC. Yeah, exactly. Cash flow the repairs as you can make them. You said it's livable. There's nothing on fire here. Cash flow these repairs as quickly as you can. You've got some money, but I need you to build that fully funded emergency fund as soon as you pay off those credit cards. And you can do that all within okay. a few months and then start to cash flow these repairs soon after that. That's what I figured. I just wanted to get in. I appreciate you taking my call and kind of letting you bounce some ideas off you. Absolutely, Justin. Happy to help. That is what I'm here for. I appreciate that. Open phone lines this hour, 888 825 You heard me mention that episode on the fine print. We dug into the rat race of credit card rewards uh, in episode two of the fine print. You can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. And man... It was fascinating. I'll tell you, we, we go through a journey on that podcast. It's about uh, 30 minutes or less, and it's a great thing to send to your friends, your family, who are convinced that they've got to play the credit card reward game. They've got to get their points, got to get the cash back, got to take the free vacations. There's no such thing as a free lunch, man. And these credit card companies are taking you to the cleaners. And you don't even know it. Go listen to the fine print wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. personality and you are listening to the ramsey show for the break i was talking about my podcast the fine print available on the ramsey network and what we do on this podcast is really dig into the hidden truths that are keeping people broke you see i have this crazy belief that if you follow the trends you will fall for the traps and what i hate seeing is young people especially in their 20s and 30s following the trends and here's what they do Here's what we teach our kids. Kids, you got to build credit early. That's the way to a solid financial future. So what do you do? You give the kid a credit card at 18 years old and let them take out $200,000 worth of debt before they can take a drink of alcohol. This is America. Wow. Land of the free, home of the broke. And then we wonder why our kids are graduating crippled with student loan debt, worried about building their credit score, They can't start families. They can't buy houses. They're frustrated at the boomers and the economy for screwing them over. And I'm sick of it. I think we can live differently. And I have done it. And we recently released this episode, episode seven, on the fine print, the dirty truth behind your credit score. And I I dig into the myth of the credit score with a scalpel and the even bigger myth that you can't live without one. And what's the big reasons people say I need the credit score? Well... You need a credit score, a good one, when you want debt. And we teach people that you don't need debt to live your life. And therefore, if you're doing some easy math at home, you realize that if I'm going to be debt-free and live a debt-free lifestyle, then the credit score is irrelevant. 
And when I paid off my debt years ago, I, uh, my credit score became what's called indeterminable. It's not really zero. It's it just I become invisible when it comes to my credit history. And guess what? I found out I could still pay for a car in cash. They let you do that. And I could still rent an apartment if I had income and I wasn't a criminal. And so on this episode, I called up apartments across the country. I called up rental houses and I asked them, and you'll hear it on the podcast, if I can rent without a credit score. And every single one said, uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, as long as it's not a terrible credit score that shows you're terrible with money. And as long as you're not a criminal and you have a job, I'd be happy to rent you. Okay, great. And we talked to a mortgage professional, a mortgage loan expert named Seth, and he walked me through what's called manual underwriting when when getting a mortgage. And uh, this isn't theory. This is a process I actually used to buy my house, manual underwriting, because when I went to apply for the mortgage, I didn't have a credit score. And there's a way around that, too. You see, back in the olden days, there were no credit scores to determine if you were credit worthy, if you were worthy of taking on this loan. And so banks had to look at your actual life, your financial history, how much money you make, do you pay your bills on time? And that's what this process is. Sometimes you'll hear it uh, called a no-score loan. And so that's what I did. It is possible. Renting a car, I've done that as well. We're sitting here in the dollar car rental studio. You can use a debit card when you rent cars. I've done it multiple times. Traveled all around the country with no issues. Getting a hotel room, same deal. And people tell me, well, George, your, your insurance rates and all these things, and your, my job checks my credit. What they're checking for is, do you have terrible credit? Have you not paid your bills to where we can't trust you with this money? If you have no score, it's a very different situation. So I encourage you guys to go listen to this episode. It's 30 minutes long. It's narrative. It's something different. We've never done anything like this before on the Ramsey Network uh, unless you've listened to Borrowed Future similar style. We weave in and out of experts and real stories that we find and some fun monologues. So I encourage you to go listen to this uh, to hopefully maybe change your perspective on the idea of the credit score. Good stuff there. We also have a bonus episode uh, in the feed right now, episode eight. Student loans are back. Is the crisis worse than ever? And we update you guys. If you've listened to Borrowed Future on the Ramsey Network, that was an eight-episode series we did in 2019. This is an update episode two years later. And I dig in with experts. We hear stories. We get updates. And it's a good time. It's about an hour long. Good stuff in that episode as well. So go check it out. Uh, You can go to fineprintpodcast.com or search for The Fine Print wherever you listen to podcasts. Austin is with us in Boise, Idaho. Austin, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, George. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, man? How can I help? Um, So I'm a junior in high school, and I mow lawns around my neighborhood. And so I've saved up about $27,000. Whoa! And it's just sitting in my bank account. Dude, way to go. And... I don't know what to do with it because I know I'm going to go to college in a couple of years. And so I'll probably need some of it, but my dad also has a 529 account for me and that has, he's predicting it'll have about 40 to $45,000 in it in a couple of years when I go to, go to college. And I'm also planning on serving a two year mission for my church after my first year of college. Dude, you are a unicorn. (laughs) <laughs> the expenses for that mission are only $400 a month. So I'm definitely not going to need all of my money um, immediately. Of course, I'll use it to go to college debt-free. But I was just wondering, should I be investing it? Should I have it in just a high-yield savings account like I have, which really isn't that high-yield? In fact, it's very low-yield. Yeah. Uh, or should I put it in a certificate of deposit? Or is there something I should be doing with my money that I'm not already? Uh, well, first of all, you are crushing it. I mean, you, many Americans are like, this kid's a junior in high school and he's doing better than me financially. It's time to make a change. Uh, and your dad has got a great head on his shoulders. It's so awesome that he's got that 529 set up for you and he's and throwing money in there. Uh, so yeah, what I would do with that money, you're doing the right thing, putting it in a high yield savings account, because this is money that you may need in the next year or two years, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't go investing this into uh, into the market right now because you've got a short time horizon where you may need this money. So your A1 is investing in Austin right now, which you're doing a great job of. You are, you have, you're not scared to work. And so you've got this 27K. I want to make sure that you can go to college debt-free. Do you have plans to definitely go to college? Yeah, I do. Where at? Do you have any idea? Well, I was hoping BYU, that's an option, or Montana State, or I could stay close to home and go to Boise State. That's 
right in the backyard. Love it. So we're talking in-state affordable schools here. Yeah, Boise State would be in-state, and BYU is pretty cheap. Montana State would be the dream if I could get a scholarship there. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, apply for all the scholarships you can, but be ready to pay for it in cash and choose the most affordable option. Make sure that your your education matches your goal. Do you know what you want to study? Uh, some kind of engineering. I think I'd like mechanical engineering. It sounds cool, but no, I'm not completely sure. Fantastic. We'll start to dig into that and see what it's like. Maybe you shadow a mechanical engineer for a day and go, wow, I love this. Or, oh my gosh, I can't imagine having to do this every day. So, sir, oh, you've got fun. time to figure that out, and you've got a nice pile of money between the 529 and your money here. I'm I'm counting up um, $72,000 that you guys have right now that you could use towards your education. I know you said you've got that mission piece that you want to do for two years, uh, and that's about five grand a year, give or take, uh, which you're obviously yep. going to cash flow. So uh, how you use the money, I think we're going to use that towards college. And if we're not sure yet, I would still park it in that high yield savings account, keep throwing money in that 529 through through your dad. That's awesome. And then once you get through college, we can see what's left over. You might need it all. all right. Or you might have 20 grand left over, and then you can use that towards your emergency fund. You can use that to start investing, use that as a down payment on your first house, all kinds of life goals. But I would not put it in anything riskier than a than a high yield savings account right now. I know it's sad. You're like it's growing at five point five percent. This sucks. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. The best thing you can do All is right. uh, keep investing in Austin. Keep growing that uh, savings that you have right now. It's so awesome. You've got the side hustle, and it's crushing, man. Way to go. Happy to hear it. <laughs> Thanks. Keep us posted on the journey, man. Did you hear that, America? A junior in high school has a higher net worth than most of you. I'm not here to shame you, but I am here to tell you that we could do better and that there is hope in the next generation. Don't tell me that Gen Z sucks. Austin's crushing it. This kid's a unicorn. We all should aspire to be like this guy. So much good stuff happening there. Happy to hear Austin's story. I want more of that in 2022. I'm here for it. This is The Ramsey Show. scripture of the day comes from Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. Oscar Wilde said, nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Good stuff there. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. Blinds.com 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. I like that. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. You can use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Rules and restrictions apply. Today's question comes from Josh in Idaho. As we're getting close to the end of the year, I'm planning ahead to make sure I have everything I need to fill out my tax returns. I usually do them myself, but I started my own business in January, so it's not going to be a simple return this time around. Should I try to do it myself, or would it be better to use one of the online services like TurboTax? Great question, Josh. Now, I'm a fan of doing your taxes online if you've got a simple situation. I am not a fan of TurboTax, and uh, the reason you can find out in episode one of the Fine Print Podcast. Me and Dave Ramsey, we dug into their shareholder presentation, and TurboTax is taking a, a big turn. They are turning into 
basically a big financial company, one of the biggest lenders in the world. And so their job is to use TurboTax as a front door and then use all of your information to then sell you debt down the line. And that's aside from a lot of horror stories I've heard with customer service issues and TurboTax doing some things wrong and the IRS is involved. So for those reasons and the fact that you own a business now, things are a lot more complicated. And so absolutely, I am using a tax pro. And lucky for you, we've got uh, some great pros that we trust all around the country to help you with all of your tax needs. They are called Endorsed Local Providers. And if you jump on to RamseySolutions.com, click on Trusted Pros, click on Taxes, we can connect you with one of these tax pros in your area who can help you do things the Ramsey way. They have a heart of a teacher, and they're going to help you make sure that you don't get screwed, you don't fill out the wrong box, you're uh, saving all the money you can, not giving too much to Uncle Sam, all of that good stuff. And they are Ramsey trusted. We trust them to help our fans out. Appreciate the question. All right, let's go to Daniel in Kansas City, Missouri. Daniel, welcome to The Ramsey Show. George, what is up, dude? How's it going? Oh, it's going great. This has been a fun show so far. Happy to talk with you. How can I help? Nice. Um, so my question is about the emergency fund. I have um, a small amount saved. It's only about 2700 But the unique thing is that represents about four months for me because I'm pretty good at living frugally. Wow. Um, the, um, the unique thing, though, is that uh, I've had like a couple emergencies just this year. And I built it back up time and time again, but like earlier this year in May, I had about eight thousand saved in my emergency fund, and a lady hit me and didn't have insurance, mm. so I had to buy, spend my emergency fund to buy a new car in cash. Um, Are you okay? But I, yeah, I'm I'm okay. It was just that I was delivering pizza, and she just um, hit me from the side. <laughs> but oh. uh, I uh, yeah, I, I had to spend the the, the money on a new car. So I bought a cash and borrow any money, but it's tricky to know like exactly how much to save because that could happen again. And it might be more than my six months expenses to buy a new car. What do you, what do you recommend for, for that situation? Well, uh, it's a great question. I don't want you to live in fear and paranoia here. Most people are going to have insurance. And so you ran into a tricky situation and I'm guessing that you did not have uninsured motorist coverage on your policy. That was the thing is that I had uninsured motorist, um, but for for my state at the time, it only covers um, medical damages and not vehicle damages. Some some law, I guess, some congressman. Right? Yeah, I might I might jump on and see if there's a different policy that would cover something like that in the future. Um, I don't know what company you have. You can jump on to. RamseySolutions.com, click on Trusted Pros, and we have uh, property and casualty insurance pros that can help you with things like auto insurance, and they can see in your state, are there policies that would cover something like that in the future, if that's a fear of yours? Obviously, it's warranted because of what you went through. Uh, as far as the emergency fund goes, if I'm you, there's nothing wrong with having six months of savings there. What would that be for you? So that would be about 3800 Okay. I mean, are you in a good I'm spot, about- debt-free, obviously? Yeah, yeah. So I'm debt free. Um, I'm investing 15%. I do 6% up to the match in my 401k. I put the remainder in the Roth. Um, I have some. I have a couple taxable investing accounts. Um, I have UGMAs from my niece and nephew. Dude, you are so crushing like, it. How old are you? I'm 24. Oh my gosh! I just dropped my pen. When did but you find out about my, this stuff? Uh, the the Ramsey plan. Yeah. Well, it was um, curriculum in my high school, and then uh, I grew up in First Assembly of God, so it was it was in there too. And I always knew that debt was dumb, but um, I used to work at an outdoor store, like a camping store, and they said, "Oh, if you get this new credit card, then we'll give you a hundred dollar gift card." And I was like, "You know, I'll just pay it off." Um, but I I didn't, and so I got a little bit of debt, went on a missions trip, came back, and decided to pay off the debt and start the Ramsey plan. That was. Um, March of 2020. Wow. Did the Lord convict you on this mission trip and was like, bro, you got to be debt free? Yes, he definitely did. Look at that. Else was like what a beautiful a story. On credit card. That's awesome. Well, yeah, man, I would, I would lean towards six months if I'm you. And my guess is your expenses are going to increase over time. So you need to increase your emergency fund over time. I would not live in fear over the car issue, but you know, you, you can beef it up to six months. Call it five grand and you'll be able to buy a, an upgrade in car over time as you save and you'll be just fine. Thanks for the call, man. Quentin joins us in San Antonio, Texas. Quentin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thank you for having me today. 
Yeah, how can I help? So I'm 21 years old. Um, I've got a small family. I'm about to get married. I've got a two-year-old son. Well, he's about to be two next week. And I don't want to rent the rest of my life. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what steps do I need to take to save up and, and eventually buy a house in the next two to three years. Okay, what's your household income? Right now for us, we are probably lower 50s altogether. Um, I am about to start. Uh, I'm looking into being a police officer um, over in San Antonio, so I know my income would, would definitely jump up from that. Um, but yeah, right now about lower to mid 50s. Okay. Well, it's a simple math equation, and we've got a great mortgage calculator over at RamseySolutions.com. Uh, you can click on free tools there and jump on there. But what it comes down to is not being house poor. So I, I know you don't want to rent forever, but I also don't want you to be house poor and have this mortgage payment taken over your life as you try to start off this marriage with a two-year-old. And so what I would do if I were you is start looking at what houses cost in the area. And then set a goal and say, all right, the house is $300,000, and if we're going to have this mortgage payment be under 25% of our take-home pay on a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage, here's how much we would need to save for the down payment. And so then you know your down payment goal. Now we have a very tactical goal. We want to save $60,000 in three years. That's twenty grand a year. How are we going to do that? Well, it might mean taking on a side job. It might mean getting a new job and getting some extra income coming in. And so you guys need to decide what that looks like for you, but it might also mean you need to adjust your expectations and your time horizon and go, all right, the houses are, that we want is 350000 Are we willing to not get that house right now and get a $200,000 condo? Or are we okay waiting five years and getting that house so that it's uh, inside of those parameters? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm rooting for you, man. Congrats on the marriage and everything you've got going on. And I know, man, renting, whew, you're just like, man, I'm throwing money away. No, you're not. You're buying time. You're buying patience. That's what it comes down to. And uh, if you want to listen to one of the episodes on the fine print we did on this, is now the worst time to buy a house. We dig into the housing gold rush and everything going on with that crisis. And I think it's going to give you a lot of hope. Uh, Rachel Cruz will walk you through the green lights as to when you're ready to buy a house. We talked to Brian Buffini, real estate industry analyst. We talked to uh, a guy who foreclosed back in 2008 because he jumped in because he was like you. I don't want to waste money on rent. Oh. Guys, it's been a fun show. Solo, for the first time, we did it. No incidents, no accidents. My thanks to Ben Hill, our producer, associate producer and phone screener, Kelly Daniel, the guys in the video booth, Zach and Nathan, our marketer, Alicia Mackey, just everyone has been just a joy to work with. And you, America, thank you so much for listening. It's been an absolute blast to be your host today. Until next time, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. This has been The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600 plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com.